Imagination is the eye of the soul. Imagination is the air of the mind. Imagination rules the world. to be able to fly, to levitate, to transform, and we do this on stage. I think the show of Siegfried and Roy is not just a magic show, it's a show with magical moments. We wanted to create a show and traditionally larger than life, but life the way how it should be, where we live in harmony with all the elements, with nature and with people. And that to transcend to our audience in an entertaining way, that's real magic. The fact was, that I believed in this, and I believed in producing the finest piece of live entertainment ever done in the world. We have 88 people on stage. We have almost 100 people in the crew. And everything moves in, in perfect sequence. Five minutes, please, ladies and gentlemen. This is your five-minute call. Five minutes, please. Thank you. Places, please, ladies and gentlemen. This is your places call. Places, please. Places. Siegfried and Roy have the ability to take the audience on a journey and I am the stumbling block throughout this journey. Each time they reach a point that there should be no, no way to overcome it, Siegfried and Roy always overcome all evil. Evil Queen, that's what I'm known as, both on stage and off.
Siegfried and Roy, as usual, and as it should be, are the heroes, are the good guys of the universe. We are emissaries of a better world. We believe in good news, and this is what we want to transmit to our audience. I'm here for a purpose. I don't believe in coincidence. I believe it all meant to be. Roy's love of animals, Siegfried's love of magic, which began when they were children, is something that's been a constant in their lives ever since, and it's really what their whole career has been built upon. When I was a little boy, a friend of mine showed me a magic trick. So I developed this and I showed it to my father. And the first reaction was my father said, how did you do that? was the first conversation actually what I had with my father. My father, who I put on a pedestal, you know, he's, uh, he knows everything. He asked me how I did that, and I think that was the start in magic. I think I'm searching still today in my performance. I'm looking for that recognition. Somebody is listening to me. Somebody is watching me. Somebody is noticing me. Roy, like Siegfried, had a very, very difficult childhood. He found out that he could imagine things, that he could have, in a sense, a freedom from all the daily pressures by being with animals. I had a wolf, Hexe, which actually is my closest friend. I guess I'll always will be a kid because Siegfried and I have been born after post-war Germany, so we really didn't have a childhood. I would look up in the clouds, I would make formations in the sky about castles and about horses and elephants, and I would see all these things. I never thought with my head, but I rather think with my guts, with, with, with my senses, just like my animals do. That's why we have this relationship. And maybe I was a tiger before in my life. Between shows, I meditate with my animals to create that moment of harmony, to take all the things you have in your mind, leave it behind. Roy is meditating with the animals, I'm meditating with my audience. About one hour before showtime, I have to go into the audience, I put the mask on. I created the mask so the people didn't recognize me. And I put a little heart or a little star on their, their hand or on the lapel. And the touch with my audience, there is an energy. And by the touch, by that moment when you do that, you learn much more about the person than you have sometimes a conversation for an hour.
our show is based on magic and illusion, but the most dominating part of our show are the animals, and especially the white tigers. And by doing so, we educate our audience in an entertaining way. And hopefully when they leave our show, go home, they'll learn a little bit more about the wonderment of, of nature. What is a greater magician than nature? Siegfried and Roy have really dedicated their entire lives to preserving the white tiger species. It all started back in 1958, when the Maharaja Rewa bequeathed to this country two perfectly matched royal white tigers. The jungle palace was designed to mirror the grandeur of the palaces of India, where the white tigers roam free. Out of concern for the continuance of this species, Siegfried and Roy secured the offspring of this beautiful pair and established their own royal white tiger breeding line. Recently, we celebrated our greatest miracle, a heterozygous animal birth. Heterozygous means the joining together of two different gene pools. These cubs might not look like they carry white tiger genes, but they do, and their offspring will be white, thus ensuring the survival of the species for centuries to come. Today, Las Vegas is the capital in the world of the white tigers because we have 27 white tigers and five snow white ones, and there's no end to what it will be one day. Maybe one day it will be enough that we can return them to where the original came from. That's a goal. To establish roots you have to be in connection with nature at all times that gives you the real source of energy
family. Our animals are family for us. I raise them from the day they've been born. It's like they are my own. And that's the way how I treat them. However, I feel at the same time, you have to teach them the respect like you would do with your child. Because once they grow up to be from one and a half pound to 700 pounds, well, there's no argument anymore. I'm against force. Force creates force. They teach me how far I can go, and I teach them how far they can go with me. We don't bring them on stage in a ferocious way, in a dangerous way. When the animals feel secure, and when the performer feels secure, the audience feels secure. love the stage. They are such hams. They know exactly when the spotlight is on them. They know their applause. The wonderful thing is between Siegfried, the animals and myself, we are all in competition with each other, which is a challenge. And the animals, they normally steal the show. And I love it. Of course, you heard about Siegfried and Roy that disappear an elephant, the tigers and all the things. You think, oh boy, I want to know how they do it. But after 10, 15 minutes, people don't think anymore how they do it. They just let it happen. Dragon is the most difficult animal for me to tame. Unfortunately, you can't bribe him. I mean, a can of oil won't do, you know. I mean. It's all computerized, and for me, it always worries something when you uh, push a button and then it goes. that split second of what can happen. Every moment that Siegfried and Roy are on stage, their lives are in danger. If it is all too predictable and, and you know exactly what's coming, it takes the edge off. You know, we like to be adventurous. We like to go that extra mileage. And therefore, you have a different energy in it. We are not taking it the easy road. We don't want the easy road. Roy takes really unbelievable chances during the show without an ounce of fear. The man does not have a nerve in his body. He goes down a very, very fast cable at an enormous angle, 40 or 50 feet, hanging by his right arm, holding on with no safety net. It shouldn't be just a show for me, it should be an experience. And I want to have the same experience what the audience has.
Siegfried and Roy can be described as day and night, and yet they can also be described as thunder and lightning. Siegfried and Roy, darkness and light. They'll be a bit like uh, the elements, like fire and water, you know. I have uh, strong principles, and to get along with that, it's, it's not an easy task. Uh, he wants it his way, I want it my way. Um, we have to meet somewhere in the middle. His dreams are very big, but sometimes too much. And I have to take him down, and he lifts me up. But once we agree on something, we know we can depend on each other, because timing is everything. And the result is magic. reach for the sky, the least you can come out with is a star. I'm blessed I came out with two stars. It's easier to talk about the people that haven't come than the people that have come. And that covers all areas and all walks of life. We don't want to tell our audiences how great we are. We just want to tell them how many great things are happening around us. If you don't give 100% yourself on stage, uh, not only I would cheat the audience, I would cheat myself. The stage is my life and my life is the stage. That's why every night for me is opening night. I can't wait to go on stage. And I think when I'm on stage, I'm, I'm the happiest. On stage, when I see the faces in the audience, I look in the eyes, and that gives me my salt and pepper of life. Once we have achieved something and we climbed that one mountain, there's always the next mountain behind it was even higher. Look for the magic what is around you, in nature, plants, flowers, and all the animals for which you have this planet. Look for it and let it enlighten your heart and your life. All around us is magic, everywhere. Just open your eyes and you see it. <laughs>